It's a complete redesign of the A6 Gel Keanu 29. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, they didn't have a chance to preview this video, and this final synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. This $160 max stability shoe is nothing like its predecessor. It feels completely different. Now it's actually the lightest Keanu that's ever been made. It goes down almost half an ounce. We go from about 10.9 ounces down to 10.5. And even though we went down in weight, we went up in stack height. We gained two more millimeters. Now Isix measures stack height a little bit differently compared to other running shoe brands. On their website, they measure stack height um, excluding the insert and the outsole. So it's gonna be a little bit lower on their website if you compare it to like other running shoe brands. On their website, they have it listed as 25 millimeters in the heel and 15 in the forefoot for that same 10 millimeter drop. However, if you include the outsole and the insert, I did some math and just try to figure it out based off last year, it should be 35 millimeters in the heel and 25 in the forefoot. So it's a little bit interesting in how A6 measures it, but it is a large stack height stability shoe. The upper is all new this year. A6 calls this an engineered stretch knit upper, which is a little bit of a stretch mainly because it's not that stretchy. There's not much of an elastic nature to it, which I think is fine. I just think it's funny. They called it a stretch knit upper. So I think it's very comfortable. It works well. It's a very dense knit material, keeps your foot well contained, fits true to size, and I think it locks you into this platform. I think it accomplishes that job. However, it's not the most breathable. For these you know, humid summer months, not ideal. As we get into fall and winter, I think it'll work a lot better. The tongue is non-gusseted, kind of wish it was, um, but it's a minor detail. Otherwise, it's a moderately padded tongue with a robust lacing system and plenty of padding in the ankle and Achilles area. Feels like your typical ASICS experience. The heel counter is incredibly sturdy. You have an internal heel counter. Feels kind of like a plastic piece back here, which keeps your ankle locked in and helps with that stability story. Overall, I was really happy with the fit and lockdown here. It just feels right on par with most ASICS shoes. Felt very connected to this platform and, and no major issues. The midsole is where most of the updates take place. It's still that dual density approach which provides the stability however the forefoot foam where the more exciting foam in my mind is now flight foam blast plus which is now about 15 percent lighter and softer and 12 percent bouncier compared to flight foam blast so that little plus at the end and this new version of foam gets you a little bit of an increase in performance and i quite enjoyed this new foam here and on top of that, like I mentioned before in the video, we also get two more millimeters of stack height. So you have a better foam and more stack height under your forefoot, provides a much more plush, much more bouncy feel. I quite enjoy this. It feels almost like a regular neutral road running shoe. I'm happy with this trend. A lot of these companies are bringing their fun, exciting, bouncy foams into their stability shoes. And because this is a dual density midsole, we also have something called light truss, which is a more dense, more stable foam that wraps from the medial side and a little bit on the lateral side. Now this essentially acts as a posting mechanism where keeps your foot from rolling to the inside. They also have something called 3D space construction, which is essentially inside the midsole, they have these geometric shapes that collapse in a certain way and help with the stability. So this is kind of almost like, I think not 3D printed, but the way they construct it, these shapes just kind of collapse strategically to help with the stability experience. So you pair that with kind of the posting mechanism here with that more dense foam on the medial side, and you do have a relatively stable shoe. However, this year they did take away the plastic Trussix system. So there is no plastic Trussix plate through the midfoot. And because they took away that plastic plate and replaced it with this light truss system, essentially it's just this piece of rubber here and some configuration with the foam. So that's kind of supposed to replace that plastic shank in the middle of the shoe. Now I will say because they took the plastic out, which does help reduce the weight, it does make the shoe a little bit more flexible and it's easier to kind of twist and bend, which I think does decrease the stability a little bit. So if that's something you really like or you really need, that might be a bummer for you. But for me personally, I kind of like this. It makes the shoe a little bit more dynamic, a less intrusive stability experience. Definitely very stable. It works well in that area. I do think, however, that the stability comes down a little bit because when we take plastic out and we place it with foam and rubber, it's going to be a little bit more flexible. They also have their impact guidance system, which is their IGS kind of plastic plate right here on the medial side. It wraps around a little bit to the lateral side, but it's primarily found on the medial side. This again kind of pairs with that posting, keeps your foot going the correct direction. So they do have a little bit of plastic on the medial side, but for the most part, they did take it out of the middle of the midsole. And another small thing about the midsole, they did remove the gel. So there's no small gel disc in the forefoot. That's completely gone. The only gel that remains is in the heel area, which for me personally, I haven't noticed too much when I run in Asics shoes. I mean, they don't use it on their top tier premium shoes like the Nova Blast and their race day shoes. So I don't know if it's just kind of one of those historical things that they have to leave in, but they did remove it from the forefoot and left a little bit of it in the heel area. 
So overall, when it comes to the midsole and the ride of the shoe, I actually like these updates. I like a little bit more of a pared down stability shoe with those bouncier and more fun foams. And then the fact that you get two more millimeters of it, I think it provides a very nice plush experience, especially in the forefoot section where it's the most noticeable with that new Flight Foam Blast Plus foam. Works well for just cruising out on those miles. Um, it's a little bit heavy, maybe a little bit bulky for some speed work. I probably wouldn't use a, this stability shoe for that. I think there might be some better options out there, but for kind of a workhorse stability shoe with a very plush premium midsole, I think this works well. However, on the flip side, there might be some runners who are disappointed because once you take the plastic trussic system out of the middle of the midsole and you add a softer and bouncier foam, the stability story and the experience does change a little bit. For me, I like this, kind of moves in the right direction for me, but for people who want that true ultra max cushion, kind of locked in, very sturdy structure shoe, um, it might be a disappointing change. The outsole has a ton of thick rubber coverage here. It makes me pretty optimistic for the durability of the outsole here. I think the shoe will last you quite a while. Now, just like most previous ASIC shoes, you do get a softer, more grippy rubber in the forefoot and a more dense AHAR plus rubber in the heel area, which is supposed to be a little bit more durable uh, for those heel strikers. And like we talked about before, you have that medial kind of light truss six system here. There's also one less flex groove. You get one, two, three flex screws in the forefoot. This helps kind of manage that flight foam blast plus and give you a little bit more stability through the forefoot. So overall, like I said before, I really like the updates to the Keanu 29. It feels much different compared to its predecessors, and I think this becomes a more enjoyable stability experience, mainly because of that updated Flight Foam Blast Plus Foam and the shoe going down almost a half ounce in weight. So I think this stability shoe becomes more accessible, more runnable to a wider range of runners. However, if you're a more traditional fan of the Keanu, you might be a little bit disappointed. I'm also curious to see what ASICS does with their running lineup, because you also have the Keanu Lite, which is kind of getting off close to this shoe here and I'm also curious to see if they keep the gel in the heel because they took it away from the forefoot so are they going to keep it here and kind of what happens to the gel name on all their shoes so we'll see I'm actually curious to see what you guys think so if you have any hot takes on the ASICS lineup with their Keanu light the gel or just kind of their new foams in general let me know in the comments